Dear believers, greetings. I'm good to, uh, I'm happy to see all of you today. I am Lee Man Hee from Shincheonji Church of Jesus. At this time, regarding this book, Bible, I would like to share what God recorded in this Bible and who am I according to this Bible. I hope we could learn about this today. This Bible is a book that writes about these things. Jesus came to this earth and he says he didn't come for sinners. Uh, he didn't come to call the righteous, but he come for sinners. So before God, we have to be humble. We have to be, we have to humble ourselves and obey God's will. Also, about myself, do I, am I found in this book, Bible? And what does the Bible say about myself? We want to know about this, right? So at this time, I hope all of you will open up your hearts and uh, reflect on ourselves through this word. In the past, I was a farmer in the countryside. I didn't go to a theology school uh, or I, did, I didn't attend a church. However, I served in the military and I was so thankful that I could survive from war. So every evening in the countryside uh, while farming, I prayed to God uh, to thank Him. And while I was praying to God, for three evenings, this being of light came to me, awakened me, and led me. So, uh, as a result, I started to walk a path of life, uh, the life of faith. But I didn't learn about any religion before. But uh, there were things that I saw and heard. And I would like to tell you about what I saw and heard at this time. So in this book of Revelation, uh, in terms of pages, it only has 13 pages. It's the uh, last book of the 66 books of the Bible, and it only has 13 pages, and it's called the book of Revelation. So what does it record about? So what's recorded in this book? So why do I think this way? Because in the world, from the time of Genesis until now, there have been many people. So there have been many pastors. However, there was no one in heaven or on earth who could know about this book of Revelation. That's what it says. There was no one. If there was, then, then that person would have been lying. Today, what is the reality of this uh, book of Revelation? Don't you want to know? This book of Revelation that was unknown to many pastors, it only has 13 pages. So at this time, what does, it, what does this book tell us? And who am I according to this book? We should know, right? There is uh, no such world where I don't exist. So even if the Bible is such a book, good book, if I cannot be found in this word, then that it's no use and, and I should understand about it. God is the creator of heaven and earth. And the word is life, it says. And it says that it is life. Yes, that is right. Adam was deceived and committed sin. So God had to leave this world. And this world became a place of, uh, of sin. However, death came to humanity and it was because of sin. 
so if people don't want to die then this issue of sin must be resolved first that is why God even sent his one and only son Jesus to bear the sin of humanity and bear the cross and Jesus Jesus bore the cross and then he prophesied about what will take place in the future in Revelation and he ascended to heaven but he promised that he would come back when he comes back what does he bring right don't you want to know that yes so now through this Bible I hope we know what, sh what we should know in the society people don't really know what the Bible is or what religion is but in the world there are many pastors so how much do they know about the Bible uh, people would know this book of Revelation is if it's a conclusion and the last work of God then we must know we must understand yes it is so but however until now uh, there were not many who knew or who were concerned about this book and we can know this in the in the book people have flesh each person has spirit soul and flesh just because the flesh is dead it doesn't mean their uh, spirit and soul is also dead the soul spirit if if the soul and spirit commit sin then then that sin would be judged so we don't want to be uh, harmed because of sin uh, it's it's better for us to fix fix our our sins this person named Adam didn't commit sin on his own but he was deceived by another being Be it was because of this, this deception so God created his people to live eternally originally but because of sin death came so God sent his son to bear the sins of the sinners and that was thus for the salvation of humanity however Jesus bore the cross but why is humanity Why is humanity's sin still continuing? And why is the work of salvation not completed yet? That's what we wonder. So Jesus came at the first coming and he spoke his word and uh, he gave, he, he made the new covenant. Have you, everyone, have you heard about the island of Pamos? Someone received rev revelation there in that island I also wondered about this so I visited the island of Pemos it's a very small island and someone who was exiled to that place received revelation in that island then he received the revelation and recorded it and it says uh, that uh, there was no one who understand about this over the past 2000 years but in this book there is it's a there is heaven hell and people to be saved it's all recorded if so then we must eat this book then we can we can be saved if not we cannot be saved if we eat something that it gets digested in the stomach but you can also eat it in your mind as well. It's same thing as listening and understanding. That's eating it in your mind. That's what we say, right? Even in the world. Do you do you listen do you hear it? Do you understand it?
So since the time of Adam, time has passed. At the time of Moses, if we think about uh, the time of Moses, people like Moses and Solomon, the old prophets, we think about them. At that time, whether they committed sin or whether they didn't com complete their purpose, eternal life wasn't, wasn't given to them at the time. The Israelites came out of Egypt and entered into the land of Canaan, but th does that mean they live eternally? No, they could not live eternally. Eternal life means to live eternally. Isn't that so? But at the time, there was, there was nothing that could solve the issue of sin. That is why, even though the Israelites could enter into the land of Canaan, they could not live eternally. However, today, Jesus promised to come, and, and that promise to come, that's new covenant. So there is the Old Testament prophecies about the Son of God to come, in all details, and according to that prophecy, Jesus was sent. Then Jesus came for the salvation of humanity. Jesus was the Son of God, and and he he was he was crucified, and that was for a great purpose, of course. And it was for the salvation of humanity. He bore the cross and he shed his blood. Also, he made the new the new covenant on the night of Passover. And why is it Passover night? It was on the night of Passover, the Israelites came out of Egypt and they ate the flesh and blood of the lamb. And they, that's how they were saved, through the blood and flesh of the lamb. If not, they were, they were supposed to die, but they were saved on the night. And on the night of Passover, Jesus made the new covenant. And what is this new covenant about? Don't you want to know? This new covenant. What is this new covenant? There has to be the content, right? And it is this book of Revelation. This revelation. Then, on the island of Patmos, John received revelation and recorded this book of Revelation. And in this book, what is recorded? Why, why is it such a precious book? But this book of Revelation was given to us by God. But there was no one who, who understood. God recorded it. God sealed it with seven seals and he had it in, in, in his right hand. So whose, whose book is this? Or even on earth, or in heaven, there was no one who could look inside this book. Even though this is such an important book, people, eh, there was no, no pastor who could understand the meaning of it. And what's the reason for this? It's because God recorded it and God sealed it with seven seals and it was in the right hand of God. But Jesus takes this scroll from God. It's recorded in chapter 5 of Revelation. So from chapter 6, Jesus starts to open the seals one by one. And when all the seals are open, then the scroll would be open completely. It would be opened. So all the seals were opened. And what will happen then? Each time the, the seal is open, then all the realities that are inside the book will appear. And when all the seals are open, then, this, then the book will be completely opened. Then all the promised word, all the realities of the promised word will appear. Then the one who saw and heard the realities will be able to testify about it, right? 
whether you did uh, Greek studies in the world, uh, there was no one who could understand this book because it's God who recorded it. It's only God who knew about it. And God recorded it. And only the one who opened the, opened the book would know what's inside. We, we can we can be uh, boastful we can boast about ourselves today what shinchanji is proclaiming is is not about the prophecies of the of revelation how but but what we're testifying is the realities of these prophecies so we have to be alert and awake more than anything, this book, uh, over the past few years, no one knew about this book. Someone who, who, who claimed to know that would be a lie. Because it has to be revealed by God himself. So, Jesus came 2,000 years ago and he ascended. Even, even so, he didn't explain about this book at the time. So God, God gave this book to someone and it says in chapter 5 that God gave it to his son Jesus. Then Jesus, in chapter 6, Jesus starts to open the seals one by one. The, the book has seven seals. Also, this book has uh, tells about seven trumpets. And then, uh, what else is there? The there are the seven bowls too. There are seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls inside the Book of Revelation. And each time the seal is broken, it's opened. The events, the actual events, start to take place. And what's recorded inside the book is prophecy to be fulfilled, and when it's really fulfilled, then the realities will appear. If it says heaven, if it says heaven will come, then when that prophecy is fulfilled, heaven will come to a certain place. That's the reality. So when, we, when it comes to our life of faith, we have to, we have to have correct understanding. And if we don't know something, we have to say, oh, I don't know. But it would be worse if we pretend to know something that we don't know, because that would be fake. That would be a fake life. In this book, we can, um, we can see... And in verse uh, in chapter ten, there is someone who eats the scroll. So this this scroll is in the right hand of God. It's given to Jesus. Jesus gives it to the angel, and the angel gives it to John, who eats this scroll. Then it's no longer in the right hand of God. It's no longer in Jesus, but it's in the stomach of the one who ate that scroll. So we need to know these things clearly. Then the person who ate the scroll would be able to testify what's recorded in that scroll. God tells him, uh, test, uh, testify, go testify what you, what you ate. Then that person would be able to testify because the scroll is inside of him. Then uh, testi when testifying, there is proof because, because that person will be testifying about the realities of, of the word. Uh, what he ate is the scroll, not the realities. So uh, we need to know things clearly. So when, when it's testified, then Maybe God will give a reward, God will be happy, but but if it's testified wrongly, then uh, it will bring judgment from God. So we must not testify on our own or carelessly. I, 
I went to Daegu and Busan to have to hold the seminars. So yeah, you might wonder why am I holding these seminars? And because I'm old now. Uh, I might run out. Uh, I'm afraid that I might run out of energy, and uh, I won't be able to testify the word. So that's why I I'm holding all these seminars while I have the energy, so I can testify. That's why I came here too. This book of Revelation wasn't fulfilled until now. So even if someone uh, pretends to know, because the revelation wasn't fulfilled until now, they couldn't see and they couldn't understand. When I'm holding seminars, I, I often ask pastors, pastors, which, which tribe do you belong to? But they don't respond to me. Would I ask them, oh, which tribe do you belong to according to Revelation? But they cannot answer. They don't even know that these tribes exist in the book of Revelation. So how could they answer this question? If someone really belongs to a tribe, they would answer right away. In the book of Revelation, there are 12 tribes. There are certainly 12 tribes. From the time of Adam until today, what does God want to accomplish? What God wants to accomplish is these 12 tribes in Revelation. And it's not one person in each tribe, but it says 12,000 in each tribe. And it's not only that, they're also the great multitude and wife who belong to them. So re regarding the beginning of salvation, how is the salvation done? Where does it take place? And who does the work of salvation? These are, these are important matters, right? Jesus, if Jesus gives a bread to, to, a, to a child and, ch and, the child would and tell the child, you go and share it with others, then the child will do that. Even if it's a, even if it's a president of a country, if if the bread is not given to him, then he doesn't have the bread. Whether it's an adult or a child, the one, the person who received the bread would have the bread. It's same in Revelation ten. The scroll is given to John to eat, and then he's told, go and testify to the, to people's nations, languages, kings, of the word that you received. So he's told to do so after, after he's given, after he's given the scroll. Because he was fed with the scroll, he, eat, he ate it. That's why he's able to testify to it. Then people will have to go to that person and receive that testimony, not from just anyone, but go to that person who ate the scroll and ask for that, ask for that testimony. Uh, or else there's nothing else to be given. So this uh, work of God is, is all made so that people can understand. So at the beginning of Revelation, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ. And what does this mean? To reveal means to open and show. It means to open and show. So Jesus took the scroll from the right hand of God and he starts to open the seals from chapter 6 and he and now the scroll is completely open. It's completely open. So that is why it's called the revelation of Jesus Christ. However, it says for God to give him to show his servants what must soon take place, how does he do it? He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John. It says, and what does what does John do? According to the instruction, he carried it out. 
then because he was told to testify to the servants, he would have testified to the servants about what has t what has taken place, what has been fulfilled, and what is what is fulfilled. It's all the events from Revelation chapter one to Revelation twenty two, because all the events have been fulfilled. Now there are realities. This is the promise of God. This is the promise of Jesus. Uh, we, you know, we can't just tell lies and speak on our own. That's not the right thing to do. Matthew twenty, uh, Matthew seven, verse twenty-one to twenty-three says, uh, "There are those who, uh, to who perform miracles in the name of Jesus, who drive out demons, who prophesy in the name of Jesus." But what does Jesus tell them? You evil doers away from me they perform all these powers and miracles in the name of jesus and they expected a reward but that wasn't the case jesus said to them you evildoers so we can't just uh say tell lies we can't just say oh this is what revelation is saying this is what revelation is saying but if the rev if these words have been fulfilled then there have to there has to be realities of these prophecies. So with that kind of mindset, we need to carry out our life of faith. If not, then uh, false pastors, uh, we will be deceived by these false pastors. So there is someone chosen by God and Jesus, and that is a person named John in chapter 1. So 2,000 years ago, uh, it was a prophecy. But when it's fulfilled today, it's not John who died 2,000 years ago coming back to life. It's someone like John today, appearing today. And there has to be this reality of the person John today. And Jesus comes for the second time today. And it's written that uh, he has these feet like bronze. Uh, his his face was like sun. He wasn't like that 2,000 years ago. But when he came uh, for the second time, he was this tremendous being. That's what it says in verse 17, right? Uh, Revelation 1, 17. And John sees this being and he fall he fell to his feet because he was he was very terrified. He couldn't see. He wasn't he wasn't able to look at him. So then the being raises raises John up and places his right hand and introduces himself. What does he say? I am, I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades, I hold the keys of heaven that's how jesus introduces himself so john would be able to recognize him and what does he show him jesus shows him the uh, what's taking place in chapter two and three and who does he show him show it to to john if that's the case then before choosing john john who uh jesus who came from heaven must have done something ahead of time, right? Prior to this. So when Jesus came, uh, he comes with the seven seven stars. And they, these seven stars are appointed as the seven messengers of the seven churches. Then uh, what happens? It says that these uh, devil's pastors, Nicolaitans, entered into the seven messengers and then deceived them. So the seven messengers committed sin. After committing the sin, Satan's pastors, uh, if maybe they wouldn't have sinned if it wasn't for the deception of the seven uh, Satan's pastors, but after this happened, in chapter 1, Jesus chooses a person that is John, and Jesus shows John everything that happened and introduces himself even. And according to this logic, 
everything has to be fulfilled according to this logic and order. When Jesus appointed the seven messengers, he didn't intend for them to commit sin. But because Satan's pastors entered in and deceived them, that's how the seven messengers committed sin. And because of this sin, Jesus chose John to send them the letters urging for their repentance. Why would these letters be sent if they didn't commit any sin? These letters were sent so that they could repent. After sending the letters, what happened? Uh, the, first, the instruction was first given when they met on, on earth. But after that, the same voice that John heard, it was calling him from heaven saying, come up here. And this is after the event of chapter 2 and 3. That's why in Revelation, it uh, this expression after this appears often, and this shows what happens before and after. So John comes up to heaven and meets Jesus there. And then what does he saw? What does he see here? He sees the throne of God. He sees the structure of God's throne. And seeing this, there are spirits. And they're so busy, and their movements are just like flashes of lightning, it says. So why are they so busy? It's because all, all the chapters of Revelation were prophesied uh, by Jesus 2,000 years ago. So these prophecies have to be fulfilled. These prophecies have to be fulfilled. So today, to fulfill those prophecies, uh, according to the promise, the spirits are so busy uh, working to fulfill them. So in heaven, to fulfill revelation, the spirits of heaven are so busy. But what about us? Should we be, should we be idle and lazy? Aren't we the ones to be saved? If, if God is working, God is the one who prophesied, and He is the one fulfilling it. He must be very busy fulfilling His prophecies. Then, John hears that the throne of God will come to this earth. So, John realized, oh, the throne of God will come, will come to the earth. So, I'm going, I, I think I'm rushing myself. So it might be a little bit difficult to understand, but I hope you uh, listen carefully and understand. Yes. Yes, even myself. I, I was a farmer, so what would I know? I didn't go to a theology school. Uh, so how, how would I know? That's what I said. Only thing I know is what I saw and heard. That's all I know. So I, I didn't have the life of faith before. However, because I was shown these things, that's the only thing I speak about. So uh, the voice said, come up here. So John sees the throne of God and hears that the throne will come to this earth. And what is the next thing that he sees? In the spiritual world, there is the throne of God. And in the right hand of God, there is a scroll. This scroll, it says that there is no one in heaven or on earth who could look inside this, who could open this book or who could look inside this book. And this book is a, is a solution to the issue of sin and the salvation of humanity, but it's sealed with seven seals and it's in the right hand of God and no one could look inside it or open it. And hearing that, uh, you know, John is very sad because this is such an important book, but there is uh, no one. There's no one who could open it, who could, who could look inside it. That's why John weeps. And one of the elders says, don't, don't cry, don't weep. And what does he say? 
and there is someone who can who can open this book so that then john would have stopped crying he he would have stopped crying and who is this one worthy to open the scroll it was jesus and jesus takes the scroll from the right hand of god then there is the new song being sung and what is this new song is it is it just a uh, songs that people sing in the world is that the song no it's the new word people have been teaching the bible revelation with their own things but that's not it but this is the real uh, real explanation of revelation the revealed word and the scroll is opened before it's open, people talk on their own. But if if it's if this scroll is open, then there will be new word, new song, coming out. So the new song comes out. So what does Jesus do with this scroll in chapter six? Jesus starts to open the open the seals one by one. Then the white horse and his rider comes out. It says the white horse comes out, red horse comes out. Then, then there is the pale horse, the black horse, right? And each horse had is a task. This horse had this task. This horse has this task. And who's the one opening the seals? It's Jesus. Jesus is the one who received the scroll, so he's taking, he's opening the seals. At that time, there are souls who had been slain asking God to avenge their blood. They say, how long, O Lord, until you avenge our blood? And, and the Lord says, wait a little longer, wait a little longer. And if I, if I want to explain one chapter, all the details, it will take me a whole hour. But we don't have we don't have that much time, right? So that is why uh, in this book, I'm telling you uh, the key key things, the key points of this book, and we're going uh, forward. So I hope you follow along, uh, and don't fall behind, but follow along, okay? Uh, let me tell you about uh, when I I served in the military during Korean War. So I had I had a friend from elementary school and he this person had good uh good uh, body build and you, you know good a uh, good fighter but I was always with him and seeing him So he helped me to carry things too. We were same age, we we're sa from same school, same town. So what's all the tasks given to him, it was shared with me too. Just like that. When it comes to the book of Revelation, we know that uh, things have been fulfilled but uh we're running out of time so i cannot tell you all the details but i would like to focus on the key key points and and go on and move on so that's what happens in chapter six and what does it say it says that the sky recedes even the earth is removed from its place this is a great matter. It says, Revelation 21, first heaven and first earth pass away and new heaven and new earth appear, it says. And this is also, I heard that this is also in the prophet prophecy of Nam Sago, an Asian prophet. It says in, in chapter six, sun, moon and star, are darkened and fall. It's not just the earth, but also sun, moon, and stars are darkened and fall. If they are, uh, if these sun, moon, and stars fall, where would they fall? 
And if they are literal summoner stars, how, you know, how could the earth survive? Is there anyone who could survive from this? In chapter 6, seals are broken, and then it says sun, moon, and star are, are darkened and fall. What do you think about this, everyone? Are these literal sun, moon, and stars in nature? It would have been uh, terrifying, and no one could survive from this situation. However, what is this sun, moon, and stars? If you go to Genesis, there's the answer. The sun, moon, and stars are um, are likened to Jacob's family, father, mother, and children, uh, the, the family of Israel. So in chapter 6, is judgment not against the enemy, but against the chosen people of God who have become corrupt. And who's giving that judgment? Jesus. And through whom? Jesus giving judgment through the four living creatures. And it's against the chosen people who committed sin and who betrayed. They're being judged. And they're likened to sun, moon, and stars. These people of Israel, likening, uh, they're being likened to sun, moon, and stars. So now they used to belong to heaven. Now they fall to the earth and they became flesh. They return to flesh. That's what happens. It's not the literal sun, moon, and stars that fall that are darkened and fall. It, this is a parable using figurative language. So through the four living creatures, Jesus gives judgment in chapter 6. And this is a great judgment. And the whole, whole nation of Israel comes to an end. Even it says that first heaven and first earth pass away. And also in Matthew 8, it says the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness. And those who come from the east and west are sitting in the kingdom of heaven. Then, uh, dear pastors, let us be awake. Elders, let us be awake. Even, even congregation members, let's go into the word of God and Understand it so that we can have life. We shouldn't, we shouldn't care about power or author authority. That's not what matters right now. So there are, uh, we need to be able to distinguish between physical things and spiritual things. And these sun, moon, and stars in chapter 6 are spiritual. And what is the reality? It's the pe people of Israel. And it says, first heaven and first earth pass away. That's one era coming to an end. When Jesus came, that era of the law came to an end. And Jesus spoke, uh, spoke about the new law of heaven, right? He started that new law, new law, new, new word. Even now, that world, uh, the religious world that became corrupt comes to an end. That's the, that chosen people, chosen people comes to an end. That's what, that's what it talks about. And this is what we need to understand. We shouldn't, we shouldn't talk about other things. When revelation is fulfilled, chapter, uh, just in chapter six, what happens first is the chosen people belonging to God, who, who claim to believe God and who, who claim to Jesus, uh, but who, who are really qualified to be called true believer of God, the, those who are born of God's seed. And at the time of harvest, they have to be harvested. Then, third thing, they have to be sealed. With what? With the word of God. With the word of God that's sealed into their heart. The church, Chinchanji, is always called a cult, heresy. Uh, th this persecution is poured, up, poured out on us. But based on the Bible, let's take an exam. Who's going to win? We shouldn't be arrogant anymore. 
The word is the word. People are people. We can't just call others cults. What, what really matters is whether my name is written in the book of life and my name is written in there. And, and I'm telling others, uh, let me, let's see if your name is written in the book of life. And we shouldn't uh, seek or pursue power or authority. Jesus came at the first coming and with the truth, Jesus tried to fix the false teachings and it's the same today. So after the event, of chapter 6, that's one era coming to an end. Sun, moon, and stars are darkened, they fall, so they are no longer acknowledged by heaven. And now, now they fall to the earth, which means they originally belonged to heaven, God. They originally belonged to God, but now they came to an end with judgment. Jesus judged them through the four living creatures. Then in chapter 7, it says, after this, then, the first heaven and first earth, the the first heaven and first earth, the former era comes to an end. These pastors, these saint, uh, these members, they all come to an end. After this, in chapter seven, there is the work of sealing beginning. It's the twelve tribes, and for each tribe, there are twelve thousand. Together, 144,000 are sealed. Then, uh, just like the 12, tri uh, 12 disciples of Jesus, there would be 12 tribe leaders. And each, each tribe has 12,000. Altogether, combined, that would be 144,000. And what does it mean to seal? It means to seal God's word into one's heart. The word of the Bible is sealed into a person's heart like a stamp, then that person is sealed. If it's if it doesn't uh, remain in the heart, then it then that person isn't sealed. So there are 144,000 who have been sealed, 12,000 in each tribe. Do you understand this everyone? We can't just tell lies, say this and that on our own, because that's creating chaos. Those who are truly sealed, uh, there will be those sealed in 12 tribes. It's not just one or two person, but there are 144,000 combined. And at one one seminar, I, I asked a pastor, oh, which tribe do you belong to? And he didn't answer. Does, doesn't that mean he doesn't belong to any tribe? That means um, uh, they, weren't, they weren't able to enter into God's kingdom or into the word. So first, there are 12 tribe leaders and there are 12 tribes. Each tribe has 12,000 and altogether 144,000. So we, uh, one must be the sealed, one must be sealed in order to become one of those sealed ones. God's word is the seal. So we, uh, the word has to be written in one's heart. And what kind of word is it? Not the Old Testament, but it's the New Testament revelation. So uh, this word has to be sealed into one's heart. Let's always remember this, everyone. And this is what we all should do. Uh, at Shincheonji Church, we, have, we often take exams from little children to elders. We all take exams often. And because of this, uh, they all became the walking Bible, and they consider this word very, pre uh, very precious, and now they become the walking Bible. 
So all of you who are gathered here, it would be it would be good if we know this word, and it would be good if we belong to the twelve tribes. That way, we can become God's promised kingdom and people. Whatever we have done before, that's not what matters. Whether we were chairman or we held a position, that's not that's not what matters. We have to follow what's written in the Bible. Then we become the reality of this Bible. We become the reality. But even if you, but even, but if if you don't know which tribe you belong to, then that person isn't sealed. If the word is sealed inside that per person, he would know. The fact that they don't know it means that they are not sealed with the word. So we should know. So first, there are 12 tribes, just like the 12 disciples of Jesus, there have to be 12 tribe leaders and center around them. Uh, the 12,000 are created for each tribe. This is the process and order of God's work. Whether I... I held a position or I carried out my life of faith for a long time. What really matters is if I'm sealed or not. And in Revelation, uh, it's it would be no exaggeration to say that uh, Re Revelation is there in order to create the 12 tribes of God's kingdom. Revelation is fulfilled not to not to create betrayers or destroyers, but it's to create those who are saved. And who are the saved? Who are those that are saved? Those who belong to the twelve tribes. So there will be each tribe, each tribe of the twelve. And in chapter seven, there are the n names of the tribes and and 144,000 belong to those tribes. And after this, there is the multitude in white, multitude, who believe, and they are also saved. However, what the Bible is telling us is, is that first there has to be the 12, 12 tribes, 12,000 each. And also there, each tribe has to have a leader. And through them, the 12,000 are sealed. And, and then there is the multitude in white. So there is the order of salvation in Revelation. However, many people claim to carry out their life of faith, but they have not entered into God's will or God's word. So in our family, we have brothers and sisters, just like that. In order to become God's family, everything has to be fulfilled according to logic and order, and it's already prophesied. And we need to keep this in mind. We can't say, oh, I belong to this church, I'm, I hold this position, I evangelize this much. But that has nothing to do with God's word and God's will. Isn't that so? This is because revelation is what God wants to fulfill, creating the 12 tribes. This is what God wants to do. Then there in revelation, there is the group of betrayers and group of destroyers, group of salvation. What does God want? God wants the group of salvation. Betrayers and destroyers, they're the enemy of God. They're only the enemies. When uh, these, these three beings will appear in Revelation, betrayers, destroyers, and Savior will appear, then the work of salvation will begin. We must not belong to the betrayers. What is to betray? It means you used to believe in God, but you betray Him. So that's betraying. And we see a lot of these things. Then, what about destroyers? Destroyers are those who destroy others. You can't call someone destroyer if, if they didn't destroy. Let me tell you something. In Kwachan, there was a place called temp Tabernacle Temple. 
And it was a, it had a large number of congregation, up to 8,000 people. And at once, they all, they all, they were all destroyed. And no, uh, not even, not a single person remains there. It was a large number then. And what happened, what happened to them? So there was someone who destroyed them. And because of this, uh, not a single person remains. It was uh, uh, years ago, and I'm sure you, you're familiar with this. It was a great organization at the time, but they were deceived and they were destroyed, and now it's no longer remaining. So there is uh, those who destroy, those who are destroyed. That is why uh, there is betrayal, destruction, and salvation in Revelation, and these events happen then if we want to be saved, then we have to go to the Savior. And what kind of person is Savior? What kind? What is the organization of salvation? It's the 12 tribes. It's what God promised and what God established. This is what God promised and He established them. Before revelation is fulfilled, can we say, I'm this, I'm saved, I'm this? That, that has nothing to do with, with revelation. So, this new work of God happens after one era becomes corrupt, then new era begins after the former era comes to an end. So today, after the event of chapter 6, in chapter 7, there is the work of sealing, which is the event of salvation. That's why at the beginning of chapter 7, it says, after this. Then uh, in chapter 7, only these 444,000, the 12 tribes can be saved. Outside of them, there is no salvation other, uh, uh, elsewhere. And that is when revelation is fulfilled. So we need to verify whether Revelation is really fulfilled or not from chapter 1, whether it's really according to the book of Revelation. We need to understand. So think about first coming. People persecuted Jesus and called him a cult. Why? Because they were ignorant of the Bible. They didn't know, but they pretended to know. They called Jesus a cult. But actually, uh, these these people who who acted in this way were worse than the Gentiles. And it is the same today. People claim to be pastors, but that's not what matters, actually. Even if you're a congregation member, it would be the best if God acknowledges you. That would be the best. Acknowledgement from God. So only these people in chapter 7 are to be saved. This is the number to be saved. And what when does it happen? It happens after the event of chapter 6. So these people of the 12 tribes, regarding them, what kind of power do they have? If you go to Revelation 21, you see that the 12 disciples of Jesus became the foundation stones of the new city, uh, the holy city, New Jerusalem. They became the foundation stones and the precious stones. So when Revelation is fulfilled, uh, the spirits become uh, come down and unite with the flesh in chapter 7, and that is the, that is the union, the marriage, Marriage of spirit and flesh. And today, uh, there are flesh on earth. Even the 12 disciples, if you go to chapter 21, they became the precious stones of the holy city, New Jerusalem, the foundation stones. It's written in the book of Revelation, what will take place when, how, and where. Every single thing written in the book of Revelation is fulfilled in order. However, people who say, I'm saved, you're saved, how can you say that without knowing this? That's not how we should carry out our life of faith. We shouldn't, we shouldn't 
uh, fool anyone. But, uh, you know, in com when it comes to Book of Revelation, it's like night, it's dark. And it says, if you add or subtract from this book, you will you'll be cur cursed and you won't be able to enter heaven. So, because there are all the realities out there, now you can't lie. So we need to learn the truth. Betrayers did the work of betrayal. Destroyers did the work of destruction. And there is also the work of salvation done. We must not add or subtract from this word. Yes, that is so. Everyone, I feel like time is running out because I had to do a lot of nagging. But I, I wish I could stay here until tomorrow and tell you everything. However, uh, please allow me to tell you a little bit more. I told you about chapter 7. If you go to chapter 8 and 9, those people uh, in chapter 6 were judged by Jesus through the four living creatures, they were the chosen people who committed sin, and they they are driven out. Those who uh, go into the rocks and mountains, it, and it's not literal rocks and mountains, but uh, rock is figurative for pastors. So they hide; they're hiding under these pastors, these rocks. And in chapter eight, uh, the seven trumpets are take are. Uh, se seven trumpets appear. It's not literal trumpets, but it's a person's mouth. A person who saw and heard. Uh, they, these people, who saw and heard would who would proclaim what happened to the pe chosen people in chapter six. That's the sound of the seven trumpets. Then in chapter nine. There is Satan's group. They're released, and the number is 200 million, it says, and they do the work of killing. How do they do it? There are these horses, and fire come out of the horses and kill a third of the mankind. And how do the horses look like? It says that Uh, we we ne we never see horses with fire coming out of their mouth, but here, uh, this horse in chapter nine, the the head is on its tail, and the head out of the mouth fire comes out and kills a third of the mankind, and and you might think, oh, this is something really strange. Right? It's written in chapter 9. However, someone who truly understands this wouldn't think that way. Horse is, is figurative for a worker, for a person. A person is likened to a, a horse. And horse has its rider. And what about the tail? Tail is figurative for false prophet, according to the Bible. So the tail... A tail represents a false prophet, and these false pastors are are using their false teachings to kill the spirits of many people. That's what it means. Not the flesh, but they're killing the spirits of people. This is explained in chapter 9. What about the head? Head is like the leader. What about the tail? The false pastor. And all the answers are in the Bible. And horse is figurative for a worker. After chapter 9, there is chapter 10. An angel comes with an open scroll. And the angel gives it to John. It's, it's John who saw all the events of chapter 2, 3, 5, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 9. He, he eats the scroll. And then he's told to go to the people's nations, languages, and kings and prophesy again. 
then what's the purpose of this scroll? It was in the right hand of God first, that it ge- it was given to Jesus, and and then given to the angel. Then, through the angel, John eats it, and now it's in the stomach of John. This scroll has God's word written in it, and it's the it's a scroll that has all revelation written in it. So it's no longer in the hand of God or Jesus or G- or the angel. But it's in the stomach of John now. That's why in chapter 1, verse 2, 1 to 3, God said, For God to show his servants what must soon take place, he made it known by sending his angel to John. Then John testifies to everything he saw and heard, it says. So what does the Bible tell us? We need to understand this. We can't just say, Lord, Lord, Not only that, and in Revelation 22, verse 16, verse 8, there is the person who saw all the events, all the chapters of Revelation, and in verse 16, he's told to go to the churches and testify. So what? who, who should the churches listen from? The person who ate the scroll. He's the one who saw all the events of Revelation, What did you, everyone, what did you learn from all the theology schools? These are the things that we need to understand. Who did God send to the churches? And what kind of person is this person? This is what we need to know. However, instead of criticizing the congregation members, pastors should first stand upright. We should we should know what is right and what is wrong. We shouldn't follow after power or authority, all these things, trying to become an elder or hold a position or or a doctor. Who's giving this authority? How can how can you get, get this authority without understanding the Bible? It's it's not necessary. Let go of it. It's not from God. It's not what God gave us. Everyone. So this person who ate the scroll, God chose this person. At the time of the Old Testament, it prophesied about Jesus. But people didn't believe in the word, so that's why they couldn't believe in Jesus. Same thing today. Because If if you don't believe in the word of Revelation, then uh, you cannot believe in the person who God sent. And what would be the result? Then the person will be uh, end up in hell. And uh, because I don't have much time, uh, I cannot tell you all the details. But here, there are many people who master the Bible. So please go ask him, ask them, and ask, and they will tell you. They will tell you if you bring a notebook and pen. You can write write your date, your name, the name of your teacher and write what you are being taught how can uh, how can we enter into heaven without such effort before uh, until now there was no one who could who could master revelation but today uh, the book is being revealed to us today so which is such a thankful thing and like i said earlier in chapter 7 there are the 12 tribes who are sealed. These people are chosen by God, right? And there are 12,000 in each tribe. If someone says you can be saved outside of this king, this people, then it's, they're saying it because they don't know God or they don't know the Bible. But God created the 12 tribes and And through them, God wants to tell everyone uh, what what's being seen and heard. That's why these people are necessary. Those people sitting behind me are the twelve tribe leaders. They master the revelation, and they're they're teaching this. 
Uh, so they're sitting behind me right now. And what really matters is the word of eternal life. That's what's necessary. And they master revelation. They master the Bible. You might think, you might think that they're just ordinary people on the outside, but inside they have God's word of truth, God's word of eternal life. So, if I don't, uh, if someone doesn't understand the Bible, they have to learn. What we're testifying now is not the it's not the prophecies alone, but the reality of this word. Isn't that so? If uh, if it's about betrayers, who are they? Why did they betray? Where did they betray? These kind of things. What about destroyers? Who are these people? Where did they appear? How did they destroy someone? These are the realities. So there are prophecies in Revelation, but we can't just uh, hold on to um, hold on to the prophecies alone. But when Revelation is completed, then God and heaven will come. That's what it says in Revelation 21. If you go to uh, Revela Revelation 21, verse one, verse 1, it says, First heaven and first earth pass away, and there is new heaven and new earth. It says, There was no longer any sea. Then what happens? The holy city, New Jerusalem, comes down out of heaven. And it's so beautiful. It's, it says it's as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. So God will come. And then since the time of Adam until uh, what, what continues since the time of Adam will come to an end. And then there is this new heaven and new earth. So there is people. There are people created according to Revelation. They are the family of new heaven and new earth. So let's keep this in mind. So, now, I... So, from, from the presider, uh, please get information uh, about someone who can teach you this, because we have to learn, right? We can't just uh, stay like how we are now. You can record uh, record what I told you today and then check and verify what I said is really according to the Bible or not. We can't just be fools. What is right is right. What is wrong is wrong. So we should be able to verify. Today I won't go to to the to the end to the very end of the book, but I'll finish here. But Revelation has these twelve tribes promised. They're the four hundred forty-five thousand, and these people are the are God's uh, new kingdom and new people. However, hundred hundred forty-four thousand are the priests. So they're like priests, it says. And it says there are 12, 12 tribes. And there has to be leader for each tribe. 12 people leading the 12 tribes. Because there are 12 tribes, there are tribe leader, 12 leaders. And for God's work to be done, there are workers appointed to lead each tribe. Then uh, God's, God's son, Jesus, bore the cross. He worked to fulfill revelation. And revelation is there to create God's, God's kingdom. 144,000 and the multitude wide. In Revelation, there is a lot of wars. That is why Jesus tells, says, oh, fight and overcome. So we have to fight and overcome the enemy with the truth. And for our purpose to be fulfilled, uh, the, uh, the 12 tribes have to be created. 
these people created at the time of Revelation's fulfillment are the real people. We have to ask ourselves, who am I according to the Bible? Have I been created according to the Bible, according to this revelation? That's uh, thinking that we have to read the book of Revelation. If I'm outside of the book, then I'm nothing. It says we must not add or subtract from this book. If you truly understand this, then if, at this time, please ask someone who masters this revelation and learn from them. And then if you learn it, you can teach others too. When revelation is completed, then it's all completed. The betrayers are betrayers and destroyers end, and then the corrupted religious world will all, also come to an end. Let me tell you one thing uh, that Nam Sa Go, a prophet, said. He said that uh, the food of the chosen person, uh, the food of the the chosen person from heaven will bring the food, and that's fire, rain, dew. This chosen person will bring this food from heaven, and it says if you if you eat it. You will live eternally, but how could the people in the world know the mystery of this word? How could the people in the world know? However, if this food, the chosen people is bring, uh, the chosen person is bringing the food, and that's fire, rain, dew. That is fire, rain, and dew. So is that is that literal rain? No, it's a. It's not the literal rain or the cloud. So how how could the people in the world know if they knew they would eat it and live eternally? So in the time of the end, this this word is the most pleasing word. Since creation, this is the most pleasing word because it gives eternal life. That's why. And it says, death has ended and life begins a new heaven and new earth. This is what Nam Sa Go said, the prophet. Which means, which means death comes to an end and then life begins for the first time. And where does it happen? At new heaven and new earth. And and that is Shincheonji. It means new heaven and new earth. And that's what it says in Revelation 21 as well. Even people from India said, uh, said similar thing. And someone from India uh, gave me a poem and said, this is about you. And Just like that, people abroad are taking down their signboards of their churches and they're putting up the board of Shincheonji, New Heaven and New Earth. How, why are they doing that? Because they understand the word. They understand uh, uh, what they originally belong will only end up in hell. In Jesus, Jesus bore the cross and he's, he prophesied and he, he's fulfilling his word to do this work of salvation but if people don't believe then they would there are those who don't believe god's word and jesus's word so if you if you don't understand something you have to ask questions until you finally understand who would want to go to hell right because it says we must not add or subtract from the book we must not do so Uh, so these people here will will teach you and guide you. Well, so let's all go to heaven together. There's only one God. There's only one Jesus. The Bible is only one book. Why should we fight amongst ourselves, right? For what? For what purpose? There are many people who curse and per persecute, but if we go ask them, they don't know about the Bible. So should we curse and should we persecute 
it, this will not bring us to heaven. It doesn't say in the Bible. It says in John 16. So, at this time, just like how uh, life and salvation is given, uh, we have to give it to others and uh, forgive others. That way, our sins can be forgiven too. This is what it says in Lord's Prayer as well. So there is no need to, to curse or persecute. So uh, let's give let's give word of eternal life and help others to be saved. That's what we should do. Uh, I, so I'm not a good speaker myself. I, I am a, a ignorant person too. I, I only knew about farming. However, now uh, now I'm doing the farming of God. I, I did a lot of physical farming before, but now I'm doing God's farming. I was a I was a child back then and with the with in the large field I used to do farming with with cows and it, and what the way I did it was someone uh, was uh, was a way where even adults couldn't do and that's how I did the work of farming in the world before but after going through the Korean War and seeing all these tragic deaths, I pray to God. Then seeing uh, the being of light came to me and I started to walk on the life of faith. In the middle of the valley, these two sides fought in the war. The our side would fire guns to the to the enemy, and the other side, the enemy side, would also fire guns. So uh, bullets coming from both sides. How can a blade, how could even a blade of grass could survive from this? So if, if this kind of, without this kind of history, how could our nation stand? And we, this country went through all these sorrows and past history. And now our stage, our nation stands. It's not only that. There are many people sacrifice for the independence of this country and this people. So we shouldn't be idle. Whether it's related to religion or our, our society, we have to be, we have to be acknowledged by God and by people as well. Let's become one, everyone. In God, in the Word, let's become one. Yes, thank you so much, everyone.